Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Welcome to another edition of the All Out Leadership Podcast. We're continuing in the life of David. We're focused right now on the subject of criticism. Uh, We see that along the way, as David was fleeing from Absalom, there was a critic who came out to throw rocks and dirt. I want to read to you 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 5, and then verse 13. Now, when the king David came to Bariam, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shemai, the son of Gera. Coming from there, he came out cursing continuously as he came. And he threw stones at David and all the servants of the king, David. And as David and his men went along the road, Shemai went along the hillside opposite him, cursing as he went, throwing stones at him and kicking up dust. As you are experiencing pain, trials, and tribulations, there is always that person who wants to make it even worse. Like when you're down, they want to really just point out that you're down. And they're going to throw rocks, and they're going to throw criticism at you. But you know what? This isn't the first time in history, and you're following in some great footsteps. Just remember, every David has a Shemai to throw dirt and rocks. Every Abel has a Cain tossing rocks. Every Jacob has an Ishmael that's going to mock. Every Job has some friends that are really terrible comforters. And every Jesus has a Judas. When you have that person who's criticizing you, you are just following in some great footsteps. Now, today what we're going to do, before we really look at how to process criticism, I want to talk to the critic themselves for a moment, because maybe that's you. Maybe you think your God-given ministry is throwing rocks and finding dirt and throwing it up on other people. And here's what's interesting when you look at this story of uh, Shemi or Shemai or however you want to pronounce it, I'm sure variations. He thought he was right. When you look at this, he absolutely thought he was right. And that's most critics. They think they're absolutely right when they've got the rocks in their hands ready to throw it, when they're talking about the dirt inside of your life. Again, King Saul killed, or King, uh, I'm sorry, Paul, who became Saul, was killing Christians thinking he did God a favor. And he absolutely thought he was right. And history is full of people who did horrific things in the name of God what was right. And so if you think your ministry is pulling others down, uprooting others, uh, that's not actually one of the fivefold ministry gifts. That's not one of the nine spiritual gifts that we see listed. It's not one of the many gifts listed in Romans chapter 12. All ministries for building up, not for tearing other people down. Proverbs eleven thirteen says, A tell bearer reveals secrets, but he that is faithful in spirit conceals a matter. You can be like uh, Noah's son. Uh, I think his name was Ham, and he was the one who exposed his father's mistake, his father's failure when Noah had gotten drunk and he lay naked in the tent. Or you could be like the two brothers who were blessed by their father, and you could walk in and help cover that nakedness. So what is your propensity? Where do you tend to gravitate? Exposing other people's failures or love covers a multitude of sins. Now, I'm not talking about covering something that's illegal. I'm not, you know, talking about making excuses for sins that that are very detrimental to other people around them or somebody maybe who's in leadership who might need to get some help. That's not what we're talking about, but we're just talking about everybody's flawed. Everybody makes mistakes. And do you have love that helps cover that? Or are you the person who's going around trying to gather prayer partners to, you know, expose people. Matthew chapter 7. So we're going to look at this verse, which I think is probably the most misunderstood and most misused verse in the Bible. From time to time, we bring this up because as a pastor for 33 years now, I find this happens on a constant basis. Judge not that you be not judged. Oh man, that's like if there's one Bible verse people know, that's it. Don't judge me, brother. The Bible says judge not. Okay, fine. Let's read the rest of the Bible. 
For with what judgment you judge, you'll be judged. With the measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, there's a plank in your own. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. If you feel your ministry is I care for all the other believers, Jesus says you're missing the point, and that is you got a plank inside of your own eye because your primary ministry isn't going around fixing people. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to fix you. I have found that when I'm focused on what God needs to take care of in me, I don't even have the margin to notice what's wrong with everybody else. And in fact, the longer I try to listen to the Holy Spirit and submit to the Word of God, the less I am impressed with me and the less qualified I feel to actually fix anybody else. And so the person who thinks they're God's gift to the world to fix everybody and point everything out, God calls them a hypocrite because you don't see your own flaws. And so it's not that you can't help people. It's not that you shouldn't help other people. The Bible has a lot to say about that. Jesus is even saying, hey, focus on you. Then you can see clearly to help somebody else out. But this verse is not saying not to judge. What it's really saying is not to judge to condemnation. Because the Bible does continue in the same chapter, Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You'll know them by their fruits. Jesus says we're to judge fruits. I'm not to judge you, but I can look at the fruit of your life, the fruit of your lifestyle, to determine whether or not it's a safe relationship, whether or not it's healthy to be around that particular person. So I'm not to judge to condemn people because only Jesus has the right to do that, but I am to use discernment and judgment as to whether or not that person's particular behavior is right. But it's not my place to go around and throw rocks and throw dirt at other people people. Remember, when the Pharisees came to to Jesus bringing the woman caught in adultery, they were the ones with rocks in their hands, and Jesus said, whoever's without sin, throw the rock. The only one who had the right to throw the rock was the rock of ages, and he didn't, and he said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. So there, if you have a critical spirit, you think your ministry is correcting everybody, I think the Holy Spirit's just saying, hey, Make sure you're not like Shemai, uh, because the end of his story doesn't turn out quite as well as I think he would have liked. It rarely does for the critic. Also remember this, nowhere in history has anybody built a monument to a critic. They build monuments to people who've done great things and made a difference in other people's lives. All right, look forward to seeing you next week as we get some practical advice from David on how do we navigate criticism from others. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gained new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all out leader.